What's up with the one with the old lady and her daughter <laughs> in Joshua Tree on mushrooms? Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I when we discovered this stuff a few years a few years after we discovered psychedelics, I started thinking I was like. Uh, this would be a fun thing to try to work into our filmmaking. Like, I don't know how we could do it, but it'd be fun. So again, like I did with the bowler, I just started telling people like, here's what my next project is. It's going to be these people. It's going to be people tripping. If you know anyone, let me know. And I asked this girl, uh, Ryan Worsley in Seattle. She's a filmmaker. And I was like, ask, ask if Seattle's a perfect area to do this, ask people around here. And like six months later, she hits me up. She's like, nobody would trip on camera. I asked a bunch of people, but, my mom's never tried psychedelics. She wants to try them, and she said she'd be down for you to film us. And I was like, yeah, when are we doing it? So a month later, we're in Joshua Tree, gave them an eighth of mushrooms each, and uh, it was fucking beautiful. It was, uh, you know, the mom's 72 years old. Yeah. Never, she didn't really even have a reference point for psychedelics. And she's like, I, I just literally have no idea what this is going to be. So we spent the night before with them, just cooking dinner, chilling out, like explaining what this could be, preparing them for it and showed up the next day and just shot them tripping for like six, seven hours. And uh, yeah, that film's called Joshua Tree. And I feel like it's a prototype for stuff we want to, for, for future projects we want to make. We wanted to see if it was even possible to do this and depict the psychedelic experience in a way that could get you kind of in their mindset. I think we pulled it off and then we, we made another one of um, our friend Ayla taking uh, two and a half tabs of acid <laughs> in Woodstock. That one's called Sweet Nothing. And that, yeah, that was the last film we made. And it's kind of my proudest film. Cause Sweet I'm, Nothing was the most recent one? Yeah, yeah. When did you do that one? Uh, 2019, 2018. Okay. Yeah, the, the COVID slowed us down a little bit, but um, yeah, she, she fucking she was she was the chick who when we were making our movie Cam Girls, we met all these psychedelic Cam Girls in um, in Seattle, and we had only tried mushrooms, but they were way into acid, and they turned us on to acid and DMT. And mm -hmm. a couple of years later, Ayla calls us up, and she was just like, "I think it's time that you film me take acid." I was like, "Fuck yeah, cool, let's do this." So we just rented a house in Woodstock, and you know pretty easy I, I, we, we all took acid i was i was tripping off camera and we just hung out for a day and i wanted to i want them to be i want those films to be really visceral i do not want to feel like the audience is having its hand held through this this experience there's no expert that comes in and says here's what's going on it's just like purely just with her and that, that was a that was a really fun one <laughs> right that sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. And, well, I mean, it started with uh, with us tripping with it. Well, with us discovering this stuff and be like, oh, my God, everyone needs to know about psychedelics. Like, they don't. Yeah, I feel like yeah. it's just such a foreign, scary, dark thing for a lot of people, mm. you know? If you mm -hmm. don't know anyone who's done it and you don't yeah. know, you don't talk to somebody like you. Yeah. A lot yeah. of people, I mean, it's, it's not something that you're going to come by very often. Even our parents did not trust any of this stuff they didn't like when we, we were just always very honest about with them about what we were doing it honestly took like five years of them seeing the results of us being more conscious for them to be like fine what is it what are you guys doing i'll mm -hmm. do it i'll fucking try it and, you know but my, both my parents did acid when they were when they were young like teenagers and hadn't touched it in 50 years and since then my uh, in the past couple of years i've taken mushroom with my dad Number of times giving him That's Molly. That's fucking awesome, dude. Molly a million times. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Acid. I've given him a candy flip once. We went to a Grateful Dead concert. And it helps him. He struggles with depression. He struggles with suicidal ideation. When someone is, when their ego is taken over and all the negative stories have bundled up, that's what depression is. And it's mm. all it is is misdirected creative potential. And it's just you're putting all your creative potential into reinforcing this negative story. And the mushrooms or the acid or whatever just comes in, just dissolve that story temporarily. Giving your body, your cells, your muscles, your nervous system a break from that tension. And I think that's why people feel such long-term benefits from it. I've seen it with my dad. You when know, you make like, a, uh, like, a, uh, like some sort of series that makes it easier for people to be comfortable with the idea of trying mushrooms. Yeah. That, well, that's, our that's what, I mean, the, the Joshua tree kind of yeah. made it like, okay, I'm yeah. watching this lady take mushrooms. Now it's kind of, I feel less scared now. Yeah. Well, that, that's like, am I going to be more scared than her? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. She, was, was she puking by the way into that? She thought she was going okay. to, she held it down, man. Like for a 72 year old lady to take an eighth of mushrooms, like it, she just had a good fucking time. She just loved it. Yeah, but that's kind of... She was kind of like convulsing, though, at one yeah, point. Yeah, I know. I, I was like, this isn't a good look. <laughs> no. And she's like... Bleh, bleh. I was like, yeah, that's the come up. That's, that's kind of what it feels like. Oh, fuck. fuck. 
but the, honestly that uh, that what you're saying right now is our next project where um we want to make uh, a film called the family trip where we we're interweaving three families tripping together and mm. and make make a, a 70 80 minute thing that is palatable so you could show your mom and be like here check this out and she might want to do mushrooms and because we've tripped with our parents, we've dosed our parents, we've we've done all that stuff at this point, and uh, you, you've got your parents to take mushrooms, yeah, and acid, and, and they're Trump it. supporters. No, okay, none, <laughs> of our, none of our parents are are like that. Okay, I thought you said that they were. No, no, uh, our aunts and uncles, just family, just random every family. single okay. person <laughs> in our extended families besides our parents are okay. are Trump supporters. Okay. They're just like typical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the family trip is uh, hopefully a film we'll be making soon. So do you operate the camera when you do this stuff? No. Do you always get a camera operator and a sound yeah. guy? Yeah, that's usually, uh, that's the bare minimum. We have yeah. we have operated cameras on some of our things, like when it's completely necessary, but I like the I like the subjects to be distracted with me. Okay. You know, because I can engage them in a way where they they forget about all that shit. Mm -hmm. So that that's like, my main focus is like, you, you get what you give. With you don't want people. them to be focused on the camera and nah. stuff? No. Okay. No, I don't even want them to. Florida Man was a little different because we only brought one lens, so we knew the camera was going to be like a character mm. in it because we're going to have to get so close to get close-ups. And right. like it's it's almost going to become a thing where you you see them reacting. It's great. But um, yeah, usually we hire sound, camera. Cast does everything. I, I just ask questions and find subjects. and That's the more expensive way of doing it. Yeah, <laughs> is it? I always do. I always do the camera operating and the talking myself whenever I do that kind of so stuff. So I do a like, lot of that kind of stuff. So it's like I just like yeah, I take the camera with a microphone mounted on it, and I just oh wow. So you did like deck hands and stuff. I was yeah. watching those. Those are great. Yeah, just yeah. like that. Wow, and the sound came out good. That's yeah, what I always get worried about. A lot of times it's shitty, but mm. Mm. I fuck with it in post and try to make it usable. It, it, it sounds great. What we watch sounds great. <laughs> totally. I, I'm always wondering about people's sound approach because I'm like, that is the one thing. It's like, fuck, man, this looks, this is, this intimidating. The thing, the, the, there was like a moment, there was like a, uh, a film this kid did that was on, went on YouTube year, like probably a little over 10 years ago that like got me into wanting to like start creating stuff and putting it out myself. What was that? It was, uh, I, I'm, I want to say that Isaac worked on it, but maybe I'm totally wrong. But um, this dude named Sam Saman Kechavars or something like that, mm -hmm. he made this music video called Love Deluxe, mm -hmm. where it's basically, it was the first like POV video I ever saw. And it's basically, uh, he's like following this girl mm -hmm. through all these different towns and stuff. Like they're on a beach and he's like following her through all these different personalities. And like, you just have to watch it. It's hard oh, cool. to explain, but. Cool, I wonder if Isaac shot that. It was a really cool music video and it was shot on like, the first 5D that shot video. Mm. But I know there was a guy that had to like walk around with a camera strapped to a helmet. Yeah. And yeah. I want to say that he was part of it. I could be wrong. Oh, interesting. I'll have to, like Isaac shot like but 300 music videos. Oh, or yeah, yeah. Like I think he was a little upset after Florida Man because so many people were trying to get him to do documentary and he's like, I'm more of a sci-fi guy, you know? So yeah. he had to like take totally. it off his website. He's not even a doc guy. And like we pulled him into that world and he had a lot of fun with it. We, we've had a lot of fun together and we're going to work together again. But uh He's, he's totally like, what the fuck? I'm getting hit up about all this stuff in, in that world now. Isn't that So he's scene? probably just like full, he's like full on getting hired by like TV networks and stuff oh, yeah. doing like, he's like union guy now. Yeah. He, he does, he shoots a lot of stuff for uh, American Horror Story, I think, mm -hmm. something like that. There's all kinds of shows that he's. It's such with. a different world when you're, when you're like working for like the established yeah. networks doing yeah. that kind of stuff versus yeah. doing stuff like that you do or like stuff that I do. That's why he craves he craves us after uh, yeah. after enough time away he's like all right what, what are we doing now <laughs> dps are always excited because they it's kind of hard to believe but we're like we're gonna shoot for like four hours you yeah. know and then we're gonna call it a day just hang out you know because it's more about it's the vibe it's about it's the vibe so we have to keep our vibe good so mm. we can put a container around it so that when we're going out we get what we want and it's like that's that's where sean's kind of different because he doesn't as a documentary filmmaker doesn't overshoot he kind of if anything, maybe undershoots yeah. to make it really easy for Kathy to go in the edit, and also just he gets the pieces he wants and puts. I, well, I, I just like I know what I know what we want going into it, and once I feel like we got it, I'm like I'm not going to torture my subjects or my crew because of my insecurity about not getting something. Whatever we got is perfect, and we're going to make it work. Yeah, 
I didn't even know that's not how other people work until, you know, we work with people like Isaac and they start telling us about how other documentarians shoot. Yeah. And I'm like, holy shit. They're like, oh, they want you to roll 18 hours a day. Of whatever you see, just fucking get a shot that's of it. That's brutal. And I can't, I can't work like that. It's no. too tedious. It's too tedious. I, I would have already bailed on this medium. Yeah, you need to do it your way. You need to do yeah. what you like. I mean, you clearly did that with Florida Man. I mean, yeah. you, you like, re that was like a, it redefined anything. Like, there was nothing like that before that I know of. I appreciate Especially that. Especially on the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck it's man. just like the same way kind of like podcasting is a new thing mm -hmm. the, over the last 10 years or whatever. It's kind of taken off now, but. Yeah. That is kind of like its own little thing that mm -hmm. no one ever, people didn't take that and run with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, uh, well, it's some. Uh, it's like, like I don't know. It's just, it's just raw footage with no music or B roll. Yeah, yeah. I like to, That's I like to tell cool. people, um, you know, they're like, "Wow, you didn't use any music or whatever." And I'm like, "Watch it again." There's a dope soundtrack in there, but it's just happening in such a natural way you don't notice it. It's happening when a bar door swings open and you hear Fleetwood Mac, and we're with a cab driver and he's playing David Bowie. And we're with these fucking weirdos from Cocoa Beach and, and you hear fucking Jethro Tull in the background. Like there's like little things that we, me and my editor were really getting off on in the edit. Like, like, whoa, there's like a secret soundtrack to this thing without being obvious about it. It's there. And like just like little things kind of bring that to life. So you mean it was already there or you guys added it? No, we didn't add it. OK, we didn't add anything. Um, but like what we what we discovered in the edit, we were like, well, there's a soundtrack to this movie. And, mm -hmm. and of course, it's so what I would think it would be because I lived down here and it, it seems like music got frozen in time in like 1998 down here. And it's like, you know, like <laughs> like Godsmack, like I wouldn't hear that anywhere else. You come down no. here, you throw it on the radio and it's like, oh, I still like Puddle of Mud and Godsmack <laughs> and like what year is this? Man? Yeah. So, yeah, all that like it's just like little stuff like that. It was such a pleasure to edit that movie. It was just like four days you know the, the way we edited that one it's like it's like i'm i like to think of it like i'm putting together a mixtape when it's something like that because it's all these disparate stories it's all nothing has anything to do with each other so i'm just like this guy's a song and then this guy's a song if i was making a mixtape for you how would i want how would i want this to feel you know the first thing does it sets the stage and you want to take it up a notch and you want to ease it out a little bit so you know i'm just kind of thinking of it like like kind of like music so we just start putting it together and then we watch it down and we say, that guy belongs here. Get this guy out of there. Mm -hmm. Watch it down. And like that movie, I feel like we watched it like five times and we're like, that's the movie. And we literally would just upload it then. You know, just like put this out on the internet. Yeah. No film festivals, nothing like that. Mm -hmm.